Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. More than 100 years ago, the most extensive feat of engineering ever was constructed on the Isthmus of Panama. It was called the Panama Canal, and nothing like it had been built before or since. Let us explore the mechanism behind the century-old Panama Canal after the $5.4 billion expansion. It took over 10 years and more than 50,000 workers to bring the Panama Canal to life. Finally, on August 15, 1914, Americans could say that they officially created a bridge between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Not only that, but since its inauguration, citizens from around the world have also used its extraordinary locale to enable their ships to shorten the duration and distance between trips at sea. In addition to this, Traveling on the Panama Canal can also reduce the overall cost and gas emissions from seagoing vessels as well. Because of this, the last 109 years since it was created have completely reshaped the trade industry. Offering almost 145 different routes of trade to 160 countries and 1,700 ports around the globe. Nowadays, the Panama Canal continues to be a steady path to take in terms of reliability and efficiency on the seven seas. That's because it's focused on offering services to world trade and the maritime industry, while promoting itself as an investment in the logistics hub of the Americas. In the end though, the Panama Canal's mission is extremely simple, to protect its most valuable resource, the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. For over 100 years, the Panama Canal has been a beacon of perseverance and ingenuity, as well as a symbol of the pride and tenacity of the United States of America. However, everything changed when the Panama Canal inevitably expanded during the biggest infrastructure spectacle since its construction over a century ago. Analyzed and considered for more than 10 years and over 100 research studies, the Panama Canal's expansion offers the globe's consumers, manufacturers, retailers, and shippers improved logistics, enhanced maritime services, and better shipping choices. After its opening in June 2017, the expanded waterway improved its ability to meet the supply and demand of the maritime trade with bigger ships, meaning it could offer a larger economy of scale. Since then, the official expansion provided an entirely new lock set on the Pacific and Atlantic sides of the canal. What happened next is this. Three unique traffic lanes were crafted, making it easy for double the amount of cargo to pass through this waterway. That being said, the new set of locks is 18 feet deeper and 70 feet wider than the original canal, which means more water savings for the environmental basin beneath it.
While the Ocean Princess approached the Panama Canal on February 28, 2016, the nearly 12-hour process was truly a thing to behold. Because it takes an average of anywhere between 8 to 10 hours to cross the canal, it's clear that the Ocean Princess took the scenic route. Naturally, it's easy to see why. There's so much to experience between the beautiful biodiversity of the canal areas and the overall experience of being in nature. Plus, it's impossible not to notice how technologically advanced the entire journey is. Although this adventure is truly stunning throughout the year, the best time to visit the Panama Canal is between early December to early April. At this point, the crossing is typically dry, despite its tropical surroundings. In spite of that, the Panama Canal is full of surprises, sprinkling or thundering at random times of the day or night. With so much to explore though, it's worth mentioning how wonderfully orchestrated the canal's mechanism is as well. As the most essential waterway on planet Earth, the Panama Canal makes traveling from the Pacific to the Atlantic Ocean an absolute breeze. Plus, it makes Asia and Europe so much more accessible to the United States. Known as one of the seven wonders of the world, the Panama Canal is both short and narrow. But each year, Almost 15,000 ships make their passage through its lock mechanism system. Here's how it works. Canals have been around since mankind began. And ships have been one of the oldest forms of transportation ever created. In fact, early engineers figured out a way to link two waterways together long ago. But the Suez Canal led the way in terms of showing what canals could be capable of. Now, vessels enter the channel led by tugboats to line up with the locks that constitute the canal. Once there, the ship travels lock by lock until it reaches its destination, the artificial Gatton Lake, to repeat the crossing on the other side. For this crucial crossing process to be successful, it's imperative for ships to take their passing extremely slow. In doing so, the canal's mechanism is able to manage its water levels in a reasonable way. With the journey taking an average of 11 hours to complete, most of the time spent in the canal is used to wait on other ships that may be in the way. Because the locks of the canal function as so-called gates for vessels to cross through, adding the third gate was the main priority for the Panama Canal expansion project in the 2000s. More recently, the canal now has four new locks in place as of 2021. These include the Agua Clara and Gatton locks on the Atlantic side and the Miraflores and Cocoli locks facing the Pacific side. While the original locks could fit ships with up to 5,000 standard shipping boxes on board, now new Panamax ships can fit up to 13,000 containers.
Nearly three months after construction on the Panama Canal expansion was complete, vessel after vessel streamed through the slim channel. Guided with the help of an extensive electronic towing locomotive system, the control room is the real carina of the whole operation. Next, machines nicknamed mules further pull the ship through the canal, with up to three mules on either side to navigate to the exit. The basic procedure of the Panama Canal water locking system can be broken down into a few easy to understand steps. After reaching the lower canal of the first chamber, a valve opens up, thereby letting water flow from the higher to the lower chamber, thanks to gravity. Then once the sea level is restored, the next gate is opened up to receive the vessel and so on. At last, the almost 80 kilometer channel is crossed, with a nearly identical process to be repeated on the opposite side of the canal. This step is necessary to restore the ship back to its intended sea level. In the long run, the process passes through the Gaillard Cut, along toward the Miraflores locks, where the ship lowering operation can come to a safe and sound conclusion. In the long run, the process passes through the Gaillard Cut, along towards the Miraflores locks, where the ship lowering operation can come to a safe and sound conclusion. With the ability to squeeze vessels through incredibly small spaces, tugboats are an integral part of the Panama Canal water lock system. However, it would be foolish to judge them as weak for their small size. As a matter of fact, most tugboats are strong enough to pull ships up to 1,000 times their own size. First of all, these tiny ships are almost entirely powered by engines, meaning their diesel-fueled mechanisms can reach speeds of up to 3,400 horsepower. At the end of the day, it's the high power to weight ratio that really sets these smaller ships apart. With multiple propellers running in perfect unison together under the sea, tugboats have much more thrust than they're given credit for. But that's not all that sets a tugboat apart. They're also straightforward to maneuver, making it more practical to navigate the seven seas. This is accomplished by a complicated array of nozzles and rudders. Featuring displacement holes that allow them to dig deeper into the ocean, the resulting friction from the sea allows the small boat to drive faster too. Plus, it's not uncommon for propulsion units to be added to tugboats for extra horsepower, especially tractor tugboats. Although it's been around for more than a century, the Panama Canal is still full of surprises. From cutting travel time to reducing environmental emissions, there are so many reasons why the canal is essential to maritime travel, with more to come as time goes on. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.